Let's check on Wall Street as international regulators try to avoid a global banking crisis. Just a few minutes before the opening bell, stock futures are rebounding from a slight slump from overnight. Okay, we can get over the hump, right? Uh, driving the rally, UBS's buyout of Sunday, uh, struggling Credit Suisse Bank. It collapsed at the same time as the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank fallouts. Uh, Drake Clark is on Wall Street with a look at who is saying the Federal Reserve has dropped the ball. Dre? Hey, Drake, good morning. We're standing here in front of the New York Stock Exchange. And as you mentioned a moment ago, the opening bell will be ringing in just a few minutes here. And there will be a lot of attention paid to how the day will go after such a volatile and challenging week. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve announcing it has established a partnership with five central banks around the world to keep the U.S. dollar in heavy rotation. Also, the Fed announcing it has established a $25 billion fund uh, to make sure U.S. banks have enough money uh, to cover their customers' needs when it comes to deposits. Meanwhile, a major bank acquisition over the weekend may also bring some stability to the financial market. Over the weekend, Credit Suisse, a bank on the verge of collapse, acquired by its competitor, UBS Bank, for $3.2 billion. The Swiss government brokering the deal, hoping it will help stabilize the international banking market and avert a global financial crisis. The recent failures of both Silicon Valley Bank in California and Signature Bank in New York setting off concerns customers would panic and drain banks, triggering a catastrophic financial crisis. But the federal government quickly stepping in, taking over both banks and assuring customers their deposits are safe. Senator James Lankford telling News Nation he believes ultimately American taxpayers will take on the cost of saving the failed banks, despite the president saying the money will come from the fees banks pay into the government's deposit insurance fund. Banks get their income from the customers who have accounts at the banks. They pay higher rates and fees. So account holders are going to pay higher rates and fees in the days ahead to be able to cover this loss at Silicon Valley Bank and at Signature Bank. A new study says more U.S. banks could also fail. The study, conducted by the Social Science Research Network, says 186 American banks could fail if half of their depositors suddenly withdraw their money. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. bank Banking system remains sound. Americans can feel confident that their deposits will be there when they need them. Now, there are some uh, financial experts who blame the Fed for causing this banking crisis, if you will, by raising interest rates in a way to try and get a handle on inflation here. But even with many of the moves and measures that have been done in the recent week or so to get these banks covered, there's still a lot of uncertainty within the banking community. One other note here, Adrian, over the weekend, Senator Elizabeth Warren expressed a vote of no confidence in Fed Chairman uh, Jerome Powell. She says that he has failed to do his job in the way of uh, implementing new monetary policy and new regulations to prevent this kind of thing from happening. She says he should step down. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.